the two boys started in surprise, at the fresh muddy footprints. What was a barefooted man doing on the steps of a house, in the middle of London? And where was the man? As they gazed, a remarkable sight met their eyes. A fresh footprint appeared from nowhere. Further footprints followed, one after another, descending the steps, and progressing down the street. The boys followed, fascinated, until the muddy impressions became fainter and fainter, and at last, disappeared. The explanation of the mystery, was really simple enough. The boys had been following a scientist, who had just discovered, how to make the human body transparent. Griffin, the scientist, had carried out experiment after experiment, to prove, that the human body could become invisible. Finally, he swallowed certain rare drugs, and his body became as transparent as a sheet of glass, though it also remained as solid as glass. Brilliant scientist though he was, Griffin was rather a lawless person. His landlord disliked him, and tried to eject him out. In revenge, he set fire to the house. And to become invisible, he had to remove his clothes. Thus, he became a homeless wanderer, without clothes, without money, and quite invisible, until he stepped on some mud, and left footprints. He escaped easily enough, from the boys who followed his footprints. But his adventures were not over. He had chosen a bad time of the year, to wander about London, without clothes. It's midwinter. The air is bitterly cold, and I can't do without clothes. I should go into this big London store, for warmth. Closing time arrived, and as soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself, the pleasure of clothing and feeding himself, without thinking of expense. He broke open boxes and wrappers, and fitted himself out, with warm clothes. Soon, with shoes, an overcoat, and a wide-brimmed hat, he became a fully dressed, invisible person. In the kitchen of the restaurant, he found cold meat and coffee. After taking the meal, he finished sweets and wine, that he had taken from the grocery store. Finally, he settled down to sleep on a pile of quilts. Quilt, blanket. If only Griffin had managed to wake up in time, all might have been well. As it was, he did not wake up, and the assistants had already arrived next morning. <sighs> An invisible man. In the end, he was able to escape, only by quickly taking off his newly found clothes. Once more, I am invisible, but naked in this chill January air. I should find not only clothes, but also something that can hide the empty space above my shoulders. I will try something from a theatrical store. Shivering with cold he hurried to Drury Lane, the center of the theater world. He soon found a suitable shop. He made his way, invisible, upstairs, and came out a little later, wearing bandages round his forehead, dark glasses, false nose, big bushy side whiskers, and a large hat. To escape without being seen, he attacked the shopkeeper from behind, and robbed him of all the money he could find. I don't want to survive in London. I will take a train to Villa Jipping. In the village, he booked two rooms in the local inn, in a small hotel. The landlord's wife, Mrs. Hall. The arrival of a stranger at an inn, in winter, is an unusual event. And then, this stranger is having such uncommon appearance. Mrs. Hall made every effort of being friendly. But Griffin had no desire to talk. My reason for coming to Ipping, is a desire for solitude. I do not wish to be disturbed in my work. Besides, an accident has affected my face. Satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist. Eccentric? Strange. Satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist, and in view of the fact that he had paid her in advance, Mrs. Hall was prepared to excuse his strange habits, an irritable temper. But how did he pay the advance? Remember? He had stolen money from the theatrical store. But the stolen money didn't last for long, and Griffin had to admit that he had no money. But he pretended that he was expecting a check to arrive at any moment. After some days, a curious episode happened. Very early in the morning, a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study. Clergyman, priest. They heard the chink of money being taken from the desk. Some thief is in the study. Study, a room for quiet work. Without making any noise, and with an iron rod grasped firmly in his hand, the clergyman opened the door. Surrender. Then, to his amazement, 
he realized that the room appeared to be empty. He and his wife looked under the desk, and behind the curtains, and even up the chimney. There wasn't a sign of anybody. Yet the desk had been opened, and the money was missing. An extraordinary affair. He kept saying for the rest of the day. But something more extraordinary, was yet to happen. The landlord, and his wife were up very early, and were surprised to see the scientist's door wide open. The scientist's door is wide open. Usually it's shut and locked. And he becomes furious if anyone entered his room. This is the best opportunity to investigate his room. The bedclothes are cold. Means, the scientist must have been up for some time. And the clothes and bandages that he wears, are lying about the room. <laughs> I heard a sniff near my ear. The hat on the bedpost leapt up, and dashed itself into her face. Then, the bedroom chair became alive. It charged straight at her legs. As she and her husband turned away in terror, the chair pushed them both out of the room, and then, locked the door after them. Mrs. Hall almost fell down the stairs in hysterics. Hysterics, expression caused by extreme fear. She was convinced, that the room was haunted by spirits, and that, the scientist had caused these, to enter into her chair. My mother used to sit in that chair, to think, it should rise up against me now. <laughs> the feeling among the neighbors was that, the trouble was caused by witchcraft. But when the news of burglary at the clergyman's became known, the strange scientist was strongly suspected of having had a hand in it. Suspicion grew even stronger when he suddenly produced some ready cash. First he said he didn't have money. And then, money was stolen from the clergyman's. And then, Griffin gave the rent. Because of this, Griffin was suspected to be the reason, of both events. The village constable was sent for. Sent for, asked to come. Mrs. Hall couldn't control her anger. Instead of waiting for the constable, she went to the scientist. I want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs. I want to know. How did you come out of an empty room? And how you entered a locked room? The scientist was always quick-tempered. Now he became furious. You don't understand who or what I am. Very well. I'll show you. Suddenly, he threw off bandages, whiskers, spectacles, and even the nose. It took him only a minute to do this. The horrified people in the bar found themselves staring at a headless man. Mr. Jeffers? The constable arrived. I have to arrest a man without a head. But if a magistrate's warrant orders a person's arrest, then that person has to be arrested with or without head. As the policeman tried to get hold of the man, he began throwing off one garment after another, and thus, was becoming more and more invisible. Finally, a shirt flew into the air, and the constable found himself struggling with someone he could not see at all. Some people tried to help him, but found themselves hit by blows, that seemed to come from nowhere. As he made a last attempt, Jeffers was not unconscious. There were nervous cries of, hold him. But this was easier said, than done. Griffin had shaken himself free, and no one knew where to lay hands on him. And that's the end of this chapter. Please like and share this video if you found it interesting and useful and subscribe my channel for more videos of class 10